Hello YouTube, today I'm gonna show you another build of mine. Um, this is the Lightning Ray Mage Hunter. This is actually a little bit of an older build of mine, like I made this build the first time in patch 1.1.2, back when Aether Ray got the piercing ability, so now this ability pierces through enemies, unlike before patch 1.1.2, where it didn't pierce through stuff, like when you use this ability, it actually stopped like at the first target, and uh, yeah, back then it was... Uh, it was like good for single target, but if you weren't like able to hit the enemy that you actually wanted to hit, it was pretty bad, right? And now it's like way better to hit like the target that you want at all times, and also for AoE it's like way way better than before. Um, so yeah, this is a mage hunter. This is gonna be a little bit green heavy as you can see, but I will put like easier to put together like versions of this build down in the comments below as well. First off, let's start um, out with the skills as always. So, our main ability obviously is Albrecht's Aether Ray, or in this case it's basically Lightning Ray, because we have like full fire to lightning conversion via um, this amulet over here. And then also we have global Aether to lightning conversion, um, not quite 100% but almost 100%. There are also like some different setups where you can use a belt to convert all of your Aether to lightning. Uh, this one has 30% here, 28% here. 29% over here, so we have a total of 87% Aether to Lightning conversion in this case. So the Aether damage that you see here will be converted to, like 87% of that will also be converted to Lightning. Um, when you get like GG rolls on these, I believe you can get up to 96% conversion, because the chest rolls up to like 36% conversion and these up to 30%. Um, but yeah, that's like even crazier than what I already have. So this is already like really good. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's check out the other skills. So we have like 1.6 Iskandrats. This build definitely does not need more energy regen, even though AR is uh, by default a pretty energy hungry skill. This build has no energy problems whatsoever, as you will see. Um, we have a soft cap on overload for OA, OA and Aether resistance. Um, pretty standard nowadays. You can also like overcap this if you have more points left. Then also we have 12 out of 12 elemental balance here, for the crit damage and also some electrocute damage. Um, 7 out of 12 mirror of your reactors. This is a really good sweet spot in my opinion. Um, like up to 7 out of 12 you gain like minus 2 seconds um, CDR for mirror and after that like minus 1 second. So if you have the points you can also put this to 12 out of 12, but you never put this at any th like point above soft cap because like after 12 out of 12 you will get like 0.1 seconds CDR or something like that. So that's pretty bad. Um, Maven Sphere, well, they removed all the damage penalty to this, so now you just smacked it out always. You hard cap this as high as, like, you put this as high as possible. Um, conversion, uh, really good for CC resistance. Um, it has sweet spots at 6 out of 10 and at 9 out of 10. In this case, 6 out of 10 is enough. Now, Inner Focus, usually you only soft cap this on Arcanist unless you do like go for Spirit Dump. As you will see here later, we do have lots of Spirit, so this is like almost a full Spirit Dump character. Like, we just put Physique to a point that with further Renewal, I have like 2.8k DA, and you really want that as like your minimum DA, right? Um, but yeah, I put like the rest of my points into Spirit. This also gives me lots of magical damage bonuses, as you can see here, like plus 866. Lighting damage basically for the spell and like plus 931% electric Q damage. So that's pretty nice damage bonus on top. Arcane Wall, I don't think this is like too amazing. It's okay, one pointer. Um, modification though, really good um, for like to debuff your own, I mean to dispel your own debuffs, to dispel enemy buffs, and also to reduce enemy elemental damage. Soft cap, so that this has like a, a pretty low cooldown actually, 9.6 seconds in this case on this build. Uh, because if you have it as a one pointer, the cooldown is really high. Um, and now it's like 9.6 seconds, you can actually use it a lot. And yeah, it's great. Mental Alacrity, well, for an Aether Ray build, this is a pretty obvious soft cap if you if you're like not able to soft like hard cap your casting speed without this. You have to put this to 10 out of 10. I think I'm like about there at 200% with this. I think I should have like exactly 200% actually. Yeah, pretty much 200%. Um, 
if you have like more casting speed from say your offhand or your um, main weapon here, then you can also like leave this as a one pointer only. Like this build has enough energy, you don't really need that many points here. I'm just taking this for the casting speed. Also one pointer in Fabric of Reality. Um, if you have more points to spare, you can put more points here for like 1% ratio damage per point. Uh, I don't think it's too effective, also because we don't scale like Aether or Chaos at all. Um, so yeah, one pointer, pretty nice for like 7% ratio damage towards Ethereals and Chthonians, but that's it. Our support class is the Inquisitor. Uh, we have one pointers in Stormbox and Lightning Tether, just to like proc. This is used to proc the Arcane Bomb Devotion in this case, really nice to proc stuff. And also, it is lightning damage, and we do scale that. And also, it reduces the A, so yeah, it's 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 pretty good. But yeah, it's like a one pointer here to like proc stuff, reduce a bit the A, and that's it. Um, soft cap deadly aim, you always soft cap those. Um, it's an amazing spell. Um, you don't ever put more than twelve points here, like because the diminishing return is just way too bad. Like after the soft cap, um, word of renewal though, definitely hard cap this. Especially because we want to go spirit dump, and then we want like all the flat DA we can get from other sources. So in this case, Word of Renewal is like our main flat DA source here. Also, it makes us just take less damage from Chthonians and Eldritch, which helps us a lot defensively on top. Uh, Vigor, 9 out of 10. It's like a sweet spot for the CC resistances. Also, it gives us 710 flat HP. Um, I kind of would like to have more points here on Hardcore because my HP is not the best, like 13k is okay because we have like lots of absorption, um, but it's like the bare minimum for me personally. Uh, also one point in Steel Resolve, this gives us even more ratio damage for Chthonians, like towards Chthonians and Eldritch, also gives us Aether and Chaos Resistance, which is like way over capped already kinda, so... Yeah, we don't need to put more points. If you have like problems with Aether and Chaos Resistance, consider putting more points here. Um, Inquisitor's Seal, this is the main absorption ability of a Mage Hunter, so you definitely have to max this out. Also, Inquisitor's Seal has really nice synergy with any challenging ability, right? You put this down, and like you have to stay in this circle, and also you have to stand still to like fire your main ability anyways. So these two abilities have like insane synergy in my opinion. Like Inquisitor Seals, I don't like it generally too much because it restricts your mobility. But I mean, channeling spells already restrict your mobility, so these two just work well together. Um, yeah, one pointer for arcane empowerment, I believe, to like get some more all damage and some crit damage. The flat damage is not uh, useful here because we don't have any weapon damage. So yeah, one pointer is good enough. Also, like, AR has insane crit damage anyway, it's around 70% here, so, like, getting 1% more crit damage per point from, like, putting more points in Arcane Empowerment isn't gonna matter too much. Uh, last but not least, we have the exclusive skill, Aura of Sanger in this case. This reduces enemy damage by 17% in this case, and also gives us 32 elemental resistance reduction towards any enemy that is around us in a 7.4 meter radius. Now onto the devotions. Um, so <clears throat> the build really doesn't need any energy. So I kinda would like to get rid of inspiration and get something better than this. But I wasn't really f like I was checking around some devotions, but I haven't really found anything that's like a lot better than this. Also, the proc still gives us OA and DA on top of energy regen. So and also slow resistance. So I don't know. This is still pretty good, even though we don't need the energy at all. Really. Um, so yeah, this is like tier 2 proc number 1, then we have the Phoenix proc, which is always awesome whenever you're using Inquisitor Seal, or like stacking together different sources of flat absorption. Phoenix Fire is, works great together with uh, Inquisitor Seal, because they, the two absorptions just add together and will work on like any damage that you take. Also works nice together with the percent absorption here on Maven Sphere. Also works nice together with Prismatic Diamond, which is another source of flat absorption whenever you drop below 50%. So yeah, those three or like four abilities just synergize very well together in my opinion. Um, Hand of Ultras, pretty much the standard tier 3 devotion for like lightning casters I would say. Really good here as well. Um, also offers some main hand damage, so you actually Lifesteal a tiny bit from that, because we have like a tiny bit of flat lifesteal here as well, like 3% from the Restless Remains here. Um, 
And also it reduces enemy resistances, like, multiplicatively, you know, it's pretty nice as well. Um, also, since I'm using Harp and Phoenix, um, when it comes to affinity requirements, the Chariot actually fits very well in there. And this also gives us stun resistance, and like, OA, Cunning, DA on the proc. It's like mainly lots of offensive ability, so this is like, it's not the greatest devotion ever, but I think it's fine, it's pretty nice. And uh, yeah, extra CC resistance is also always good. Um, obviously, as every lightning build, you should always use Arcane Bomb. So this one is mandatory for resistance reduction. Um, yeah, really good. Make sure to have this proc as often as you can. I put it to Stormbox here. This is really good. Uh, really good proc ability. Um, yeah, another tier 2 I'm still using is the Watcher. Um, I could maybe switch around this, but uh, like... As I said before, I need like lots of DA from like non-physique sources, right? Because I want to pump Sturt. Um and this helps me also get this DA to like a decent level without putting too many points in physique. So it's still pretty nice here, even though it just got nerfed by like one percent, but it's still like a good devotion. Um, other ability, like like we also have the scythe here. The scythe is really good because, well, it also gives us three percent DA here, five percent HP and energy. Um, we don't really need the energy as much, but it also has percent spirit, and percent spirit does not only mean more energy regen, but also more damage, right? That's pretty nice. Uh, tier 2 devotion for flat resistance reduction, in this case is Elem Elemental Storm. Um, if you don't have maxed out casting speed, you could also consider the Revenant. But you can't make use of the flat last year here, except for the weapon damage on Tempest, but that's like, I mean, on Hand of Ultos. But that's not really worth it, and like the casting speed here got nerfed a bit, like 2%, like it's 4% now instead of 6%, and the flat resistance reaction from the skeletons only applies for 1 second now instead of 2 seconds. Which is still okay, but um, I mean we have maxed out casting speed anyways, and this also reduces elemental resistance by 32, this one also only reduces by 25, so yeah, elemental storm is just a superior devotion here in my opinion. Um, other tier 1 devotions that I need to like get affinity and also casting speed are Jackal, like this one has 6% total speed here, sub here, uh, that's okay. And then the Spider, it's really great now, also gives me more spirit, 3% spirit here, 5% casting speed here, OA, flat cunning spirit, DA, percent cunning, percent attack speed, I mean we don't use that, but yeah, these are the devotions I use. Onto the gear, now this is where it gets a little bit harder to... Well, make, I mean, you can, you can kind of make this build, like, you can enable this build easily, but to have the same performance that I have, you need to farm a bit and get some, like, proper greens. Um, you can still make the build with, like, any of these, and any of these, and either any of these, or, like, a blue item that I will show you as well later in the Grim Tools down below. Uh, like, any of these, and any of these. Um... Yeah, I will like just give you a, an easier to make version down below as well. Uh, I personally though, I mean, as you can see, like my scepter is not the best already, like diminutionist of sanctification. Um, this is a rare suffix, and also it gives me 24% damage to Chthonians. So this build actually like obliterates obliterates any kind of Chthonian, right? Like we have 24% multiplicative damage here. We have. Um, 6% multiplicative damage here, and another 7% over here, right? So that's like 13-37% uh, and then also like 12% more here, and that's like 49% multiplicative racial damage towards Chthonians. Uh, that helps a lot, a lot when you run Bastion of Chaos, or when, say, you're playing an SR and you fight Gravathul, or when you're playing Crucible and you fight like multiple Chthonians there as well, they would just die like instantly almost. Um, so that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, Demolitionist gives me just percent cunning and spirit here, like we're not using Ozin's Wrath obviously. Um, and yeah, Sanctification, I think like, no, like the, the Scepter itself got, um, I think the crit damage got nerfed a bit, but it also got health added, so this one has a, like percent HP now. Um, this one is a low roll though, it has only 2%, you can roll like between 2% and 4% here. Um, yeah. But I did high roll on the percent cunning and spirit, I believe that's like 3-5% to 5 on the demos prefix. Oh, yeah, it's, it's alright. 
it's good enough for this, I would say. Um, the component here is the Seal of Corruption, which is like another Aether Resistance Reduction, I mean Lightning and Aether Resistance Reduction um, ability. Kind of works kind of the same way as uh, Bloody Pox, right? You put it once on an enemy and then it spreads. And that's pretty nice. Um, the Augment is Ravager's Eye. I'm using this two times here. Or percent HP and DA again, like we are lacking. We're pretty like uh, short on both of those because of Spirit Dump again. Uh, Seal of Resonance. I don't really use this that often. In this case, though, like because this is an Aether to Lightning conversion build, you cannot use Seal of Might, right? Um, because Seal of Might converts Aether to physical, and we don't want that to happen because that would interfere with these uh, Aether to Lightning conversions here. And because of that, we don't have too many choices. And Seal of Resonance does give me like percent elemental damage and also some flat HP. And also it makes it a little bit easier to like max out CC resistances. Like stun wouldn't be the problem, but it's more about like uh, petrify, freeze, slow resistance, this kind of stuff, right? So that's pretty nice. Um, so yeah, the amulet here is also a build enabler, the Aether Bolt Pendant. This one has lightning resistance reduction to Stormbox, that's also another, another reason why we use this actually, because of the lightning resistance reduction attached to this. And also it converts the fire damage to lightning ray, add uh, to lightning t for Aether Ray, and also adds additional lightning damage for Aether Ray on top. This is a craftable relic, I mean amulet, I rolled I believe pierce resistance here on this one. Um, you can roll like whatever you would like to roll here, um, depending on like which smith you craft this at and how many mats you have to like craft multiple of these. Um, also, I'm always using the Seal of Annihilation on like every non-pet character. It's just, in my opinion, the best component for amulets. Probably on like any build that needs attack speed, casting speed, spirit. And also the proc is insane, right? You have like minus OA and minus DA that stacks with like all other debuffs anyway. Really, really good. Um, I'm using triple Typhon's Powder here, I believe. No, like double Typhon's Powder actually. And then one Uzir's Wisdom for augments. These give me flat DA as well and flat HP, which I need. And then this one gives me vitality and bleed resistance. Uh, I'm mainly using this for vitality res resistance over cap, I believe. Um, I could switch around one of these for, like this one for Typhon's Folder as well. And then maybe dump some more spirits and like some more points of the spirit even. Um, but this is kind of fine. Actually, no, I can't, right? Because I need. Yeah, I need 700 physique for the boots here, and I, I can't put more points into spirit than I currently have, actually. So, yeah, I think the components and augments are fine like this. Um, yeah, ring of ring components always bloody crystal. Um, just the best in slot, in my opinion, for almost any build. And, um, yeah, I didn't talk too much about the, the offhand here, right? This is Destroyers of Celerity. So Celerity does give me casting speed, and Destroyers, I believe, gives me physical resistance. But that's really nice to have here, like, physical resistance is always good on a caster. It's only 15%, like, without this it would be 8%. And, uh, I mean, armor is obviously even worse, so... <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nice to have a Destroyers prefix here to give you physical resistance. And I would say, like, you want to have casting speed, like, any casting speed effects on any of these two. Like, off celerity on either of those or those is good enough. And, like, then preferably you would have, like, a physical resistance prefix on this one. And, I don't know, anything on this, I guess that's good. Like, yeah, per percent spirit is not too bad here in this case, actually. About the helm, um, I'm also gonna put a, like an easier to get helm here as well for the easier to make version. In this case, I use Ravager's Dread Gaze. It is, I believe, the best in slot item for this kind of build because of like it has another ability, right? That also reduces enemy resistances by another 10%, and also gives me plus one all skills, uh, has CDR and 3% crit damage. In this case, you can either use the crit damage one or um, the H, like percent HP one the, from the Ravager of Flesh. Um, that one got actually buffed in a recent patch, and I would say that on this build, Ravager, like the Ravager's Helm of Flesh, is better than this one because three percent crit damage. Yeah, as I said, like AR has enough crit damage already, right? And then like Deadly Aim gives you even more crit, and the Seal gives you crit, so. You don't really need the 3% additional crit damage here. Um, you're better off getting like 10% more HP, right? That would be like... 
put me down like up to 14k, right? That would make the spot a little bit safer. So yeah, Ravager, stretch gaze of the Ravager of Flash would be better than this map, you know. It's still decent though. Um, for the shoulders, I'm using Renegades of Vitality Logorians here. Um, so yeah, this is another like 1k HP on these, 10% cunning. 4% DA, 2% away. Now, Logorians has added, like, Logorians um, base, like the base of this MI, had percent OA before already, but on the last patch this had, like, this got added um, percent DA on as well, right? So this can roll like 2% to 4% OA now, and also 2% to 4% DA. Uh, so this is a low roll on OA, but a high roll on DA. And also it has, like, still a physical resistance, like 2 to 4%, uh, believe as well and then renegades gives me some resistances here it's like okay and also the person cunning is from renegades i believe and of vitality is just flat hp so yeah you just want anything here that gives you oa da hp or resistances just like anything that makes you tankier um because like the base is already good enough right the percent oa and the percent da and also plus three to aether ray is really good already I'm using Valaxaria Sky, Sky Torn Robes here. Um, I got a off the Flash Hulk suffix here, which is pretty crazy, as you can see. Like, without this, my stand resistance would be a little, a little bit worse, but still okay. Or, like, I would probably try to put more points into conversion, like, put conversion up to 9 of, out of 10 if I didn't have this suffix here. Um, also, Mystic gives me percent spirit. I mean, we're just dumping spirit, so Mystic is actually not that terrible here. Usually Mystic is terrible, but in this case it's actually okay. And yeah, off the Flash Shark also gives me more resistances. Yeah, you can, you can see that's pretty crazy. I was using a Blue Chest before I found this, and Blue Chest was also just fine. But this one is a little bit better. Arcane Harmony Leg Earrings. Um, you can craft these. These are craftable, and I rolled 4% armor on these, which, generally speaking, is like a good roll. But in this case, it's actually... Uh, <laughs> Not that great, right? Because this build doesn't really care about armor anyway. Like, I kind of gave up on armor on castles like this because you have like insane flat absorption anyway, right? You have like Seal, you have Phoenix, you have Maven Sphere, you have even like a Prismatic Diamond when you really need it. So, more armor actually is not that good. And that actually also made me switch over the component to Ancient Armor Plate here. I was using like Scaled Hide before to like. Get more armor, uh, more armor uh, absorption, like more percent armor absorption, right? And um, ancient armor plate gives you like more armor and more percent armor absorption as well. So you end up having like only a tiny amount less of like effective armor. But this also gives me physique, which makes me well have to put less points into physique, and I can put more points into spirit. So yeah, this fits again the spirit dump theme. Also, this give me these give me a uh, Flat spirit and flat DA, like 105 spirit, 123 DA. Again, this build needs flat DA, this build wants spirit, perfect fit here as well. And on top of that, we have also skill disruption protection. So, yeah, that's also really nice for a channeling skill like this. You don't want to get like disrupted because then you have like zero DPS, right? So, yeah, these are really good here. Except for maybe the armor roll. roll, like that could be better, like percent physique for example would be way better than percent armor in this case. Uh, for the relic I'm using Escandra's Balance, Escandra's Balance does give me casting speed as well, also minus skill energy cost, which again I don't really need, but it's okay. Uh, also like spirit and percent elemental damage, that's pretty nice, and plus one arm cast. And the proc actually is pretty nice, it gives me like a boost of 18% crit damage and plus 300% elemental damage on top. And the completion bonus also has plus one disintegration, which actually, yeah, gives me like one point more here. This might, this might be the reason why this is hard capped. Actually, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, this might be the reason here. Um, you can also use Serenity Relic instead of this, or you can use um, Eternity Relic as well. Those two are pretty nice alternatives, I would say. Um, I'm using the Mythical Phantom Thread Girdle here. Also, this one is for insane flat OA. This one is a crazy roll as well when it comes to OA. Uh, like 100% elemental damage, plus one arcanist. 
and also 10% physique requirement or like minus 10% physique requirement for armor which helps me with the physique for the boots here so yeah I need only 700 instead of 778 here that's pretty nice. Alternatively, you can use a blue belt that gives you like plus one arcanist and plus one inquisitor. I'm gonna put that in the link below as well. And for the medal, um, I chose a pretty defensive medal here. You can go for Mark of the Shadow Queen if you prefer that one to like get more points at the Aura of Sanger. Um, Mark of Unlife though is really nice when it comes to when like when you want a defensive medal that gives you a like lots of DA instead of the HP that. Um, Mark of Divinity gives you, right? Like, Mark of Divinity is the defensive metal that you want to use when you need HP. And this one is the one that you want to use when you want to uh, have, like, more DA, right? Um, the rolls are not the best, though. This is pretty meh, actually. But they give me, like, plus 3 max all rest for elemental. And also, yeah, some flat DA, percent DA. As I said, again, what I want here. Like, I actually need the DA more than the HP here, in this case. It also plus 3 to Escandra switches, well, okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. And also, I'm using the Rune of Displacement Augment here. Just pretty standard on, like, most castles, I would say. The best TP in the game. Um, the gloves, Aether Reach, these are also mandatory for Aether, like, pretty much any Aether Ray build, I would say. Even for the Lightning Ray build. This doesn't give me like any lightning bonus, but it does add flat aether damage to lightning ray, to like aether ray, which gets converted to lightning again, so yeah, really good. Also plus two to aether ray itself, and plus two to the dis disintegration. And casting speed, yeah, this is like, uh, it's basically tailored for Albrecht's aether slash lightning ray, right? Um, and also the component, like, the must-have component is restless remains here, for 10% casting speed, like 10% casting speed is just insane here. And then I actually use Stone Hide, Stone Plate, Grease, or Arcane Balance. I mean, these are, again, pretty crazy. Um, I'm gonna try to put easier to get ones here as well. Um, in the link below. But yeah, this is what I use right here. Gives me elemental damage, electrocute, electrocute damage, and then, like, tons of resistances. And, well, it does give me 10% more armor, but again, that's kind of useless. On this build. Um, let me show you the build. A little bit um, action here. As you can see, like uh, energy cost is not a problem at all here. Like my energy barely moves. Um, if anything, I would like to get rid of some energy devotions and grab something else instead. But I wasn't really make like able to make that work properly so far. And yeah, dummy kill time is usually like around 20 to 25 seconds. And the damage got nerfed a little bit, uh, but DPS is still like 230, 240k sometimes even when you're like have all the procs active. That's pretty good. Oh, gotta get those blooms. Okay, so for some reason, I've not been to this place on this character yet. But let's try to kill the Kraken here. Just have to make sure that you put the seal on yourself, not on him. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to stand inside it. Uh, but yeah, this boss is really easy for this character actually. Alright, let's check out the growth here on this character. Um, that should be a pretty smooth run though. As long as we don't get like void marked cast speed. Uh, Modify, right? I mean, we have Shattered, which is not that great, though. That's okay. At least it's not white marked, right?
always buy Frozen Hearts and better shells here. Also, if you're like missing out some components and blueprints, check out all these blueprints. This guy sells like lots of them actually. And you can also always check out the living rings here. They are pretty nice. Have a pretty nice base. Like searing, searing of alacrity, for example. If you're say playing a fire default attacker, this might be pretty nice for you. And uh, sometimes they also sell like spark throwers here. That's pretty nice for a promise strike shaman as well, like ranged promise strike. But this aether gaze guy, well, not a problem because we don't uh, have any melee attacks trying to. He's not gonna f make us fumble. Um, this one, well. Of Guild and Arcana is pretty nice, right? Because this one also has skill disruption protection. Hmm, that's not a bad find, actually. It's okay. Hmm. Only Panetis was, like, worth playing. I mean, it's it's okay. You can play it, but it's not anything, like, super crazy. It's not top tier. You do have to be careful about these guys, like throwing rocks at you here as well. Kind of hurt quite a bit. And you also have to make sure that you always stand inside your seal. There is so much tankier inside a seal than outside of it. Oh, kitty. A running crab on shit. Such a pain to kill this guy every time. Because he always runs away. Yeah. Also, if, if you haven't done Ancient Grove yet, always take a look at this um, corner here as well. There are some nice uh, one shot chests over there, so it's worth to go there once per character. So against Gargoyle, since I'm probably gonna kill stage 1 pretty fast, I wanna like not make my Phoenix proc on the first stage and save it for the second stage. Yeah, so for the second stage we're gonna try to make Phoenix proc with this. And also use notification, right, because the second stage actually deals like lots of fire damage. And then we use mirror to just burst him down at the end. That's pretty easy. Alright, we're also gonna run the Tomb of the Heretic here again. Because last time I ran those, I think I had like a slightly different setup actually. The setup now should be even better than last time. So we got corrupted, slowed and exposed. Which doesn't really affect us in any way, right? Like exposed actually it's better for us because it gives me more CDR on these abilities and mirror and modification. Slowed, well the spell is a turtle anyways, like when it comes to movement speed at least. And corrupted is kind of whatever. Uh, so usually here you just want to skip everything and just rush for the Court of the Magi, right? Like for the Magi event over here. Um, there are just some like tentacle guy spawns, like sign spawns over here sometimes. Um, those can drop like the Morganeth um, grips, boots and pants. So, it's always worth to kill those signs as well. They also drop like pretty nice random legendaries on top. Also, you don't want to skip any elites here, right? There are no signs here, you just skip ahead. Try to not get uh, slowed too much by these guys here. And now we have to uh, like check out if there's the physical mage 
here or not. He did not spawn. So, like anybody except for the physical guy, is rather easy to defeat, I would say. Except you could be careful about when he does that ability, right? Then you will have, like, resistance reduction uh, by 36%. On yourself. So if you don't have everything overcapped by like 36%, um, should like check out your resistances once he does that like um, blue circle ability, right? And uh, yeah. Also, this chest can apparently spawn the Morganeth shoulders, so it's always also worth to check out this uh, chest on top of the rings. And yeah, after the Mojais, um if you have some sign spawn, like here, you kill them. If you don't, then you just get everything. And move on to the next level. Now, in the second part of the dungeon, you have way more um, spawn locations for these signs of hunger. And so... We might get lucky here and get some more Morganath items from them. Yep, another sign here in front of the death room that you also never want to skip because the death room drops the Morganath chest piece from the chest. And yeah, like you can either choose to fight these uh, signs one by one before activating the mobs that spawn from the chest here, or you just go in and get everything at once. Depending on like how confident you feel with your build, I would say. Um, you have to like absolutely make sure to kill any arcane that spawn here ASAP. So like try to deactivate your items maybe to have like uh, to like just see more stuff. Right? Otherwise the screen will be a little bit too cluttered by all the items. And uh, yeah, I mean also kill the signs, right? Make sure you stand inside the seal. And also try to not get hit by too many claps of the watchers, like the preservers and watchers here. Once they like charge up their clap and they clap you and you get hit, you will have like a massive debuff over here. And uh, yeah, you should either try to dodge those or disengage once you got hit. Except we got the shop of this new dungeon here. Um, he's uh, pretty nice actually because he always has a purple mat for you. You should always buy his purple mat. And then you can also always check out um, the shields here, like these shields, for example, are pretty nice for some aura builds. Um, and these are pretty okay for like a pistol retaliation RF build. And uh, I don't know, the rest is kind of like, it's okay, but nothing amazing. So usually I just end up buying the purple mat and leave again. And yeah, after the shop, you still like kill every single sign of hunger that you encounter. And uh, try to let's move up your way to uh, kill the watcher first, maybe for the sign. Like the watcher, like sometimes these watchers, even though they're like what, like yellow mobs only, are they're actually like more like they're actually scarier than um, the signs sometimes. Get another sign here. Get another chance for some boots, pants, or gloves here. We got the Mage Lord signet though. Mage Lord is a pretty nice blue ring set actually, right? Yeah, yeah, this one is really good. Or say Greek Battle Mages, for example, or like Krieg uh, Death Knights. Um, like many uh, different Aether Bulls actually that want elemental to Aether conversion. I think one more spawn here for signs, but no signs this time. Also, we don't want to take this preserver into the like into the fight here. Right? Like, yeah, you see, you saw that clap. Like, don't get clapped. Okay, imagine being clapped next to Morgan after like that, right? You don't want to. You want? You don't, just don't want that to happen, right? It's a no go. So check out the uh, spirit that he spawns. Like, if this spirit is the physical guy that throws a rock at you. Like the rocks from above at you, 
You definitely want to kill the spirit first and then focus back on Morgana. There we go. Last but not least, we're also gonna visit Lokar here. And whenever you enter this area, make sure that your build has like at least um 65% freeze restaurant. We have 67% here, so we are like barely there. Um, we want like extra safety to just use another offers ointment here. And so we gotta be a little bit careful about this like skill disruption this guy has, right? You not only want to farm low card set, but also the dark one set, you actually have to go like all the way back here to get the last adherent. Like this is the adherent that will drop the dark one shoulders, like the mantle. And the other ones before that are like dropping gloves, helmet and chest piece. Now on to low card himself. You also nullify him because he has like lots of fire damage and lightning damage, right? So Using nullification just for the damage reduction is pretty nice for that. Once he like drops low, you can also just use mirror aggressively. Like now, for example. Yeah. So, thank you so much everybody for watching. This is gonna be it for this build highlight video of mine. Um, you can also check out the other achievements that this build had, like um, I was able to kill Mogdragon with this character, I was able to clear Crucible 170 Gladiator on this character as well on Hardcore and also Shadowrun 50 to 51. Um, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing my channel for more content and also give this video a like or a dislike or a comment. You can ask anything you want in the chat below, like in the comments below. Uh, any kind of feedback is appreciated. And I do hope to see you on the next video or on the next stream maybe even.